What's up guys, my name is Josh and uh, welcome to another review. Now this review is actually kind of a follow-up video a while ago, I was talking about uh, saying that I need a new pair of speakers. And I just so happened to receive a very cool email from a guy named Michael. Now more on Michael in a second. Now in that video, I was talking about needing a new pair of speakers and I was running between a few different options that I, I was thinking about. One of them was the CAF Q100s, which are right here. Anyways, to get on with the story, Michael hit me up and was like, hey, I have a pair of these Q100s that are used, they're mine, of course, but if you want them, you can have them. Personally, Michael, thank you very much. And so I paid to have them shipped out here and uh, they're here. Now, if you've never emailed me to send out a headphone or a speaker, I kind of offer to give people shout outs and, and help grow their social media. And sometimes they have more subscribers than me, such as Metal 571 or Z, you know, but I still give the shout out. And to new creators or people who just want to stay anonymous, I won't shout you out at all. Help wherever I can, like, but it is something that I offer. And Michael has a YouTube channel that he will be posting what he plans to be daily content um, in about a month or two, I think, is, is kind of his general game plan called Audio Play. There's a link down below. If you guys could go do me a huge favor and go and kind of thank him by subscribing to his channel, that would really help him out. And I know what he plans to do is something similar to me, is post daily content um, revolving around all things audio, including reviews. So he might be worth checking out in the future. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the review of the Kef Q100 speakers. Now this speaker is a coaxial design. Now, if you don't know what a coaxial design is, it basically is a singular mechanism where normally you would have a tweeter and a woofer that were separated, usually a tweeter on top, woofer on the bottom in a standard arrangement. But this actually takes the middle of that woofer, cuts that out and puts a tweeter in there. And so it's got this kind of unique design that you don't really see too often, but Kef has really kind of not necessarily popularized it, but they do use it a lot. The woofer itself is a five and a quarter inch and the tweeter is a one inch. And they, they call it like the unique, which is U-I-N dash Q array. They call it the unique array. I'm not sure why. Now I don't know exactly what goes into that. I'm not super technical on those sorts of things, but I will say that from what I hear, this does have a few benefits to it and it might be worth researching on your own, but I'm here to review the end product, not the technology that goes into it. So personally, I think this is a beautiful design. I think the waveguides for the tweeter are just stellar looking. I think they're, they're gorgeous. I think the box itself is very well made. It seems to be particularly solid, not like the best built speakers that I've ever seen before, but I don't have any complaints. Each one is about 14 pounds. They're not self-powered. They do need to be driven off of an amplifier, so you will need an amplifier. The amp that I was actually using for these was the Sprout 100. Uh, they sent out a review unit. I'm still in the process of kind of testing that, and that's what I've been using with this, with the bass boost turned off, by the way. So one of the cool things that you generally don't see, but not only is this speaker able to be bi-wired, and this actually has a bi-wire synchronization. So there are two screws here that you can actually screw on tight to connect the top and the bottom speaker inputs and that actually plays like a regular speaker you don't have to buy wire them if you don't want to which is a huge plus now a couple bits on the power these are 8 ohm speakers and have a sensitivity level of 86 decibels all right guys now let's get into sound and kind of what i think about these the way that i view these is on their own as a 2.0 system excluding a subwoofer which i actually do recommend more on that in a second these are really, really great for vocals, like stellar for vocals. They have great forwardness to them. They have great texture and depth and detail and imaging for the vocals. Now I'll talk about that more in a second, but for now, let's go ahead and jump into trouble. So depending on where these are, these really have different performances. So in a desk, in a medium sized desk is actually where I found them to be the most pleasant, most enjoyable all around. Um, out in the front room, because you have to crank them up a little bit because you're a little bit further away, I found the treble could be not quite like peaky in terms of being a little bit too bright, but they really bring you just up to under that level, like one or two notches below there. Now on a desk where I find them optimally set up, they don't have really any flaws at the treble. It's crisp, it's clean, it's present, but it's not extremely intrusive. And really I, I don't have any complaints here. The very, very top end is a little weak. Anywhere between like 15 to 20 K doesn't really seem to have a lot of presence there, but that may also lend itself to a little bit more smooth characteristics in terms of not feeling like everything is too etched out because in a speaker design, especially if you're playing a little bit louder than usual, that can be really intrusive and really aggravating to your ears. At least in my experience anyway, everybody's gonna be different. I'm just trying to lay out how this sounds and maybe this works for you, maybe it doesn't. All right, so mid-range. Mid-range is awesome. Vocals and instruments just had this little bit of like, they kind of stepped forward a little bit and it was beyond the mastering in my opinion. Now on top of that, because these are what they're good at, I really wanna get into the vocals for a second here because the vocals were just angelic for females and rich for males and just had this 
this presence and this attitude to it and this forwardness to it. I found this particularly good for female vocalists or kind of higher range male vocalists like Sam Smith, uh, but for female vocalists like standout artists were really like Andre Day, uh, Adele, Natalia M. King, which you probably haven't heard of because not many people have, but I highly recommend checking her out. Um, very, very, very beautiful voice. Um, all the postmodern jukebox stuff was played amazingly. Everything felt natural. Uh, vocalists really took a step forward and and I'm a person who likes vocals a lot. That may not be what you're into and if you're into more, I don't want to call it dynamic music, but if you're into more just things that aren't so vocal based like Daft Punk or anything like that, then maybe look elsewhere, maybe look with something with a, a little bit more bass performance. And let's go ahead and get into bass for a second. Um, the bass is it's clean, it's clear, uh, it's tight, but it, it just kind of lacks any kind of real low end. Um, pretty much anything below like 90 to 100 hertz is almost non-existent and it drops off drastically. Because even though that's a five and a quarter, because of the area in the middle that's actually cut out and isn't producing the same low frequencies that the rest of the kind of the donut shape of that woofer is actually making, it doesn't really produce stellar low end. It's present and it really kind of starts kicking hard about 100 hertz, but everything below that kind of falls off. So if you really want kind of a full range experience, I would highly, highly recommend adding a subwoofer to this. And depending on where you set these up, these can actually have a pretty thin sound to them, um, especially in like the front room. On a desk, they do okay because generally, in my experience, I don't want a whole lot of bass in a desk because everything rattles. I got, you know, the computer I gotta worry about, don't wanna shake that too much. You know, I don't want strong vibrations on the desk in my experience, I don't want things sliding off of it. So I want a good representation of bass, but I can't have like the phenomenal cellar bass that I would look for in like a, a home theater or anything. Now, speaking of home theater, these actually can be home theater speakers. These are excellent for movies, um, just phenomenal. But like I said, if you're in a home theater or in a bigger room, you're gonna wanna add a subwoofer. Uh, and the reason why these are so good is because of that, that vocal speciality that they have. They just have these incredibly crisp vocals. And when I was watching them in movies, that was a really standout feature, was how like clear and just present the vocals seemed, more so than any speaker I've ever tried in my apartment here. Now, speaking of apartments, that could be a consideration. I mean, maybe you can't have a subwoofer, like I can't. I, I want one dearly, but I can't have one because it would disturb the neighbors too much. So a speaker like this, where they give really solid performance, especially in the mid-range, and you get this great vocal isolation, so not only is most of your music and most of your vocals and dialogue in movies wonderful, but you don't have to worry about this extreme low end that I even have to worry about with something like the JBL 30Xs. And it's not the totality of low end, I mean, it only gets down to like 78 hertz, which is further than this, but it's definitely noticeable in a speaker and it definitely makes a lot more things shake than these do. So depending on your circumstances, where you're placing them, um, you know, what you're placing them with, do you have a subwoofer, do you not? These may work for you or they may not. Now, real quick, imaging and soundstage. Imaging is impeccable between the speakers. Um, there definitely is a sweet spot. They don't like to go super, super wide, but they also don't like to be super narrow either. Depending on where you're sitting though, is gonna depend on where that sweet spot lies. So play around with them a little bit if you have them to kind of find that, that real good imaging place. Soundstage is pretty good too. Um, it's not the best I've ever heard, and depending on the price that you buy these at, I would say it's worth it or it's not worth it. For example, when I was first looking at getting new speakers, on Amazon, these were about $250 a pair, and now they've bumped back up to, I think what their original price was, was about like $530, $550 somewhere around there for the pair. First, let me talk about three things I like and three things I don't like about this speaker. The three things that I like are the build in terms of its beauty. I think it's a very well-designed speaker and it's pleasant to look at and the girlfriend doesn't hate it, which is always a plus. Um, the the by-wire synchronization, which having that customizability could be valuable for certain people, but you also are not making it a required thing to run the speaker, which I like. And then the vocal performance is is probably the best vocals I've heard on the speaker so far. I've heard better treble, I've heard better bass, I've heard better soundstage and better imaging, but I haven't heard better vocals. And then the three things that I don't like is gonna be the bass response. Um, it, it is a little bit lacking. I understand that it, it's, it's hard to create a lot of low end bass, but stopping at like 90 to 100 hertz is a little high for me. 
um, especially if you're gonna get this as a 2.0 system. Preferably getting down to like 70 or 80 is gonna be optimal, um, if not lower, if you can. And second thing is gonna be that price at the 500-ish dollar range for the pair. I think that's a little too expensive. I personally think that 250 was a great deal and I could highly recommend them at that price but a 550, it's a little much. And to be honest, I don't really have a third thing that I dislike about these. They do what they do well, and they don't do certain other things, but it doesn't really make me feel, besides the base, like anything's missing. So this will bring me into a very simple conclusion. For the price of 250 a pair, absolutely worth it, especially if you like vocals or if you have a subwoofer. If it's at the price of five to 550, it's a tougher sell. If you really like vocals, this might be a great option. Although I haven't heard very many speakers around the $500 range, so I could be kind of leading you down the wrong direction. So I'd advise you to turn somebody with a lot more experience in that kind of monetary area than me. All right, guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you very much for watching. Go check out Michael's channel, which is gonna be, again, audio play. There's a link to that, uh, the Q100s down below. Michael's channel is gonna be at the very, very top. Uh, links to all my recommended products are gonna be down below, like usual, uh, Patreon, all that stuff. All right, uh, that's gonna be enough self-promotion. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.